Alaska is notoriously known for its massive mammals on land and in the sea. But also living in the oceans around Alaska are these incredible alien-like creatures that are captured daily by the lowering of the tide cut off from the rest of the ocean and what are known as tide pools. Tide pools here are like time capsules. They hold remnants of ancient ecosystems and offer a glimpse into a world that remains home to these little aliens. My first stop is the Alaska Sea Life Center. These touch tanks are the perfect representation of what we could find in the tide pools. Take this sea star for example. Its five arms aren't just for show. These arms are packed with tube feet that allow it to cling to the rocks even when the tide crashes in. It's like nature's version of rock climbing. There's so many different species here, potential species we could come across. We have the fish-eating sea star, the red-banded sea star, the leather sea star, and my favorite, the sun sea star, capable of having 40 arms. 40! Think about if we had 40 arms, trying to buy a shirt with 40 sleeves? <laughs> Yikes. This little guy here is a hermit crab, constantly on the lookout for a bigger shell to call home. And these delicate sea anemones, I have as much as a hard time saying that as Nemo did. They may look like flowers, but don't be fooled, they're actually fierce predators using their tentacles to paralyze tiny fish and unsuspecting shrimp. Talk about survival of the fittest. See that little ball of spikes? Yep. You guessed it, that's a sea urchin, and they use those spikes for protection from predators. The only soft spot are their mouths, located on the underside. They have a unique structure called Aristotle's lantern. That's pretty neat. A set of five teeth that they use to scrape algae off rocks or chew through kelp. Woo! Aristotle's lantern. That's something I'll never forget. starfish and that's actually not a correct term because they're not fish at all. Now there's over 2,000 different species of sea stars which is technically their proper name and not all of them will actually have five arms. The sun, the sun star actually will have up to 40 different arms. But it's pretty impressive. Imagine this and then times like eight. <laughs> that's pretty neat. So they have no brain, no blood, and when they eat their stomach actually comes out of them. So it comes out and they'll eat on clam shells, mussels. What they'll do is when they're trying to hold on to their feet, they have these little suction cups. They actually grab their prey and they'll eat on them. And that stomach basically comes out, eats it, and digests their food, and then it will suck back into their stomach or into their body when, when they're all done eating. And most species can actually live over 30 years. They're crazy little creatures. <laughs> now, what they say is also you should never lift them up out of the water because they'll suffocate, right? Which is really weird, really bizarre to me because see, he's just sitting here out of the water. Now that one's out of the water too for the most part until a wave comes. So it makes me confused because of all the research I've been doing, you should never lift him up, right? Not like that. So here he is in the sun and only getting the water when it splashes over. Now of course the water will rise and they'll be back underwater, but it's very interesting, very neat. And they're like little aliens. <laughs> So cool. At first glance, these tide pools might seem like ordinary puddles. But if you get a little closer, and you'll see they're bustling with life. This is a world of micro proportions, where survival is a delicate dance. These creatures have adapted to thrive in this environment. You never know what you're gonna find under each rock you flip. It's incredible how so much life can flourish in such a small space.
Oh, look at these little fellas. You boys better get back under something before you get eaten. As you can see, the water's starting to flow back in. That means high tide isn't far away. It's incredible that every single day, these creatures do this little dance. They hunker down when the water comes back in, and they wait for the water to flow back out, giving them a whole different ecosystem to explore every single day. Oh, it is. Look at this little fish I found. I have actually no idea what species it is, and I kind of wanted to catch him, so I found this little shell. We're going to check him out. Check him out. Isn't he a little cutie? Now, tide pools aren't only a nursery for small fish species, but also baby, baby starfish. Anything baby, anything little that can hide under these rocks, they're going to live here until they're big enough so that way they can stay away from all the predators out in the ocean because you know they're out there. This has to be the community center. Look how many things are in here. And check this little thing out. To this day, I have no idea what that is. I tried to do some research, and the furthest I got was isopod. And it looks like one. Not one that'd be on land. Like if you had a bioactive enclosure, this thing lives in the ocean. And look how beautiful the little green thing is. He just looks like a little green pickle. They are so cool. Easily the coolest thing that I found in the tide pools and underneath these rocks. He is the definition of a little alien. He's not a plankton, but he kind of looks like plankton from SpongeBob. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I don't want him up there. <laughs> Exploring tide pools is like opening a storybook full of ancient secrets. And while it's exciting to witness their beauty up close, remember, we must protect these natural wonders. Leave only footprints, take only memories. And the next time you find yourself by the coast, take a moment to peer into a tide pool. Who knows what hidden world you might discover.